Hello and welcome. My name is Victoria and I'll be giving a short demonstration of my web app. This project was created to demonstrate loggerhead sea turtle endangerment and how U.S. fisheries, wildlife services, and industry partners can collect nesting data, observe sea turtle behavior, and migration patterns to develop conservation practices for species management. Loggerhead sea turtles are recognized as high risk of extinction in the wild and are one of the most abundant species of sea turtles that nest in South Florida. Nesting activity data we will be viewing today was collected using Art Collector on beaches in the 10,000 islands. Data were collected under a FWC marine turtle permit and followed FWC protocols. The critical habitat layers depict general areas considered essential for the conservation of the Northwest Atlantic Ocean Distinct Population Segment of loggerhead sea turtles. Within this web app, you can see that we have different widgets that are located around the border of our project here. Some of the bookmarks we will be using are, will be listed here and they correlate with the layers that we have in our layer file. You also have the ability to edit, print, share, and summarize. You can search for an address or a place using the search toolbar here and using your mouse middle wheel to scroll in and out and left clicking to pan. If you find yourself in a different location and want to return to where our layers are, you can simply use one of the bookmarks or you can click this home button here, which will default you to the extent of our map. You can view the legend any of the data layers, and you can also perform quick analysis. Highly migratory, loggerheads prefer coastal habitats in temperate and subtropical regions. Their life cycle spans a series of stages of development from hatchling to adult while occupying three different habitats throughout, pelagic or open water, shallow estuaries, and undisturbed sandy beaches. Within our layers, you can see some of the different critical habitats that we have called out here. Hatchlings and juveniles typically spend the first 7 to 15 years passively migrating in the open ocean and end up in sargassum mats to feed on small fish and crustaceans. They later migrate to nearshore coastal areas to forage, mature, and breed. If we open the sargassum habitat, we see that the polygon is much wider than our screen. If we view our bookmarks and click on the sargassum habitat, this allows us to view the full layer and allow us to click on the different segments and give us full detailed information. We can also turn on the nearshore reproductive habitat as we know that this is where the juveniles and the hatchlings migrate to later on as they mature. Females mature at approximately 35 years and often return to the sandy beach where they hatch using the Earth's magnetic field to navigate thousands of miles and lay their own eggs. Breeding occurs year-round, peaking in the summer months, and nesting season falls between April and September. Using their hind flippers to dig, females can lay an average of two to four clutches, with each clutch containing up to 120 eggs. So here we can now turn on our concentrated breeding habitat layer. With this turned on, as we mentioned before, there's a few ways that you can zoom. If you highlight these dots here, you can, collect, you can select Zoom 2 and easily pan closer to the polygon layer that you're interested in. Nest incubation lasts 45 to 80 days and often erupt during full moon phases. Eggs, hatchlings, and juveniles are threatened by terrestrial and marine animals such as raccoons, coyotes, birds, and crabs, and large fish. Humans also disrupt their habitats and are responsible for the light pollution which affect their nesting areas. If we go to our bookmarks and select loggerhead nesting, you see that the map zooms to the loggerhead nesting data here. Upon further clicking, we retrieve the information for each nesting site that was collected. This nest is collect 
is located on the Panther West Beach, was collected May 14, 2020, at 5.20 a.m. Here you can also see additional details, such as which beach zone the nest was located, the nest cover, the nest investigator, total hatched eggs, hatchlings emerged, and other details, such as the total eggs, and any of the additional excavation comments or nest treatments. Now that we have a little more background on the sea turtle species and how to use our web app, let's try turning on all of our layers together, zooming out to the full extent, and viewing our legend. So here we can see that the legend will allow us to see all of the layers that we have turned on and are within our current view. If we zoom in here, you see that our legend shortens because we can no longer see the sargassum mats layer. Additionally, if we keep zooming in, you see that we lose more layers in the legend. Here we can see the nesting beaches that are color-coded in relation to whether there is a high density of loggerhead nesting, medium, low, or if there's no presence of loggerhead nesting. When we zoom in further to where the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service collected data in 2020, we see that these items are green. So here we have a medium density of loggerhead sea turtle nests. If we go back to our layers and we zoom to our loggerhead nesting beaches, we'll turn off our other layers, make it easier for visibility purposes, and expand this so that we can see our legend at the same time. You see these color-coded areas all throughout the coast of Florida. So areas where they are purple indicate that they are high density might be areas where the Fish and Wildlife Service <clears throat> may want to potentially survey uh, in the future for loggerhead nesting. This way we can get an overall estimate of the loggerhead nesting distribution all throughout the coast of Florida. If we were to have additional data, we could easily turn on these other layers of overlap and determine if there's any impact to their critical habitat areas and if there's any change in the location where the sea turtles are choosing their nests. We could also take this information and determine if there are any increases or decreases in sea turtle population. If we turn off all of our extra layers, leave on the loggerhead nesting data, and we turn on the USA protected from land cover conversion, this may take a second. Let's zoom to our loggerhead nesting. And upon selecting any of the areas around this nest, you'll see that this is identified as a gap status of two, meaning that this area is managed for biodiversity, but natural disturbance events are suppressed. We can turn this layer off and now turn on our USA Fish and Wildlife Service lands. You see this yellow here, and once we select it, it tells us that this area is managed by the 10,000 Islands National Wildlife Refuge, and there is the option to select for more information. If you select this, it takes you to their website, and this gives you more in-depth information regarding conservation and management. 
I hope that this demonstration increased your ability to better understand the importance of loggerhead sea turtle conservation and to help spread public awareness and reduce everyday threats. Thank you.